Hey everybody, today I wanted to talk a little bit about the uh, 718 or the 982 which is the official name, the series of cars. This is my current uh, loaner from Porsche and it's a little bit of irony involved I think because this is a dark blue car with the, with the chalk two-tone interior just like my 911, sort of like Porsche is saying. Yeah, remember when you used to have one of these cars Nick? Yes, my car has been now in service for coming on four months or just over four months. And I'll talk about that more at the end of the video. Hey Tui. But today I wanted to talk about the 718 uh, and that has not been quite the sales success that Porsche hoped it would be uh, and I wanted to speculate on why that might be and what perhaps what Porsche could do to fix that. Uh, you know the 718 is an interesting car to start with because it was released in 2016 uh, and really it was an update of the uh, 981. The 981 is the same platform this was the naturally aspirated six cylinder version of this car and Porsche are very strict, very predictable on their releases of cars. Every seven years they release a new generation of car uh, and within that seven years at the four year mark they get the refresh, the update, just like with the 911s you get the 991.1, four years into that seven year cycle you get the 991.2. Well it's the same across the range, all of the models get a new generation every seven years. So with the Boxster and Caymans we were expecting uh, an update and really we've got a new generation. Well Porsche called it a new generation but really it was the switch to the four cylinder engine, uh, the more modern PCM and a few other changes. So a lot of us Porsche people have been wondering what would happen after three or four years of the 718 would we get a whole new generation because that's kind of what we're expecting because really this was just the update of the 981 um, or would they just refresh this well as it turns out Porsche have recently said no they're not updating this car at all uh, it's going to stay much the same way as it is for the next three or four years which is interesting because that makes me think are they going to replace it with something completely new or is it just because it's not selling very well they're not going to put the money into refreshing this car? I guess we just have to wait and see. Meantime we can speculate as to why this model isn't selling very well and to start with you know sports cars in general aren't selling that well at the moment. I mean you don't want to ask Honda how many NSX, the new generation of NSX they've sold. But Porsche generally tend to buck this trend. Uh, they're selling more cars overall every year and more sports cars, more Porsche 911s get sold every year uh, despite the, the downturn in sports car sales worldwide. And of course the number one reason people are going to give why they don't like the 718 is of course the conversion to a four cylinder turbocharged engine. Watch any YouTube channel, everyone has bagged the sound of this car and of course you know it's never going to sound like a naturally aspirated 6 but uh, it has its own unique sound. And Porsche are aware of this criticism and with the 2020 models coming out uh, they've tuned the sound of the exhaust uh, and they've added sports exhaust as standard across all models. That's right. We now have this bizarre situation where you have the oval tailpipes on the back uh, representing the base exhaust, yet inside you've still got the button uh, for sports exhaust. Let me demonstrate the changes in sound that they've made right now. Let's move across to driver Nick. Pleased to meet you, I'm driving Nick. Let's see how this new exhaust tuning has changed the sound of the Boxer slash Cayman. I think it sounds a lot less like a WRX now, it's got its own sort of distinctive growl. I mean there's only so much they can do to improve the sound of a four cylinder engine but this is definitely an improvement, should have been like this from the beginning. So I think standard sports exhaust is a first for any Porsche car uh, for an unlimited model so that's pretty cool, now standard across all the 718s. The second reason I think is because the, the, the pricing point for the Cayman and Boxsters is $60,000 to $90,000, $95,000 and there are a lot of sports cars in that range to choose from 
and just about all of them have significantly more power than the Boxster Cayman. But as I've always said, I find, particularly in sports cars, less is often more, and that is certainly the case with these cars. You know, this is the base model, and I absolutely love driving it. But it's really the torque that's provided by this, this turbocharged engine that makes this car such a joy to drive. You know, I never feel that it's lacking in power, and I thoroughly enjoy uh, the Boxster and the Cayman, the way they handle so well. So much better than a lot of sports cars out there. I think Porsche lead the way when it comes to uh, their chassis engineering, and I'm totally happy with the power in this car. And I think the third reason is an image issue. You know, I believe that the Boxster and Cayman are more of a young person's image. You know, you see a 20 or 30 something person getting out of one of these cars, you think, that's pretty cool. You see a crotchety old man like myself getting out of one of these cars, and you think, hmm, who's that guy trying to fool? That's right. Um, yeah, they, they have a they have a more of a specific image, uh, these cars, and you know, it's going to be hard for Porsche to get around that. That doesn't mean that they're a bad car in any way. I think anyone that would own one of these cars would be absolutely blown away at how awesome they are. It's definitely, if you're from a later generation, you probably tend not to buy uh, a Porsche Cayman and those are the people that can actually afford these cars you know most 20 or 30 somethings can't afford a 60, 70, 80 thousand dollar sports car so their demographic can't actually afford the car that it's aimed for. And finally today I wanted to have a quick look at the options on this car and what options would make this even more awesome. You know this is the base model Boxster uh, its base price is sixty thousand dollars and this car's got another eleven, twelve thousand dollars worth of options on it. And what's notable about this car is not the options it's got, but the options it does not have. You know, it does not have an upgraded stereo system. It's just got the standard base stereo system, which is perfectly fine. The Bose certainly has a bit more punch to it, and you don't get so much clipping and distortion at full volume. But the base system's fine. It also doesn't have the popular options like PASM or the dual climate air conditioning, or even the Sport Chrono. Uh, and even the um, Power Steering Plus. But of course, not having these options doesn't detract from the driving experience one little bit. And I think that's an important thing about this car. You know, this car has got, as I said, a, a few options on it. And I think to make this car better, I'd actually remove most of those options. Let's look at these options. Well, first one is that it's got the night blue exterior color. You know I like that color, so I'd probably keep that. But then it's got but then it's got $3,000 of seven speed uh, dual clutch. Now the dual clutch transmission, the PDK, definitely gets the most performance out of this car. I love PDK, but you know, putting a manual transmission in, not only saves you all that money, but it really makes the car come alive and you feel like a, you're driving a true roadster uh, when you have a manual transmission. Save yourself the money. Next is the leather interior. Obviously I'm a huge fan of these two-tone leather interiors with the deviated stitching. Uh, but once again, it's not necessary. Porsche offer a two-tone leather option for a few hundred dollars, so you don't have to pay the $3,000 uh, for this very fancy leather. It doesn't really add to the driving experience. Save yourself the $3,000. $500 for seat heating, that's a nice option to have if you live in a colder climate, but if you live in a warmer climate, once again, don't need that. Lane change assist, uh, $700. Actually, in the Boxster particularly, you don't need the lane change assist because the visibility is so excellent in these cars, obviously with the top down. With the top up, it's a little harder, but yeah, I could certainly do without the, uh, the lane change assist. Uh, the safety bars in exterior color, <laughs> $700. Who needs that? No one ever notices. Save yourself the $700. And finally, one of the most ridiculous options of all, um, the, the colored instrument dials, in this case, white. Uh, I'm so pleased Porsche have stopped doing this. Everybody does this to their instrument dials, think it looks cool, I think it looks ridiculous. Uh, and not only that, they're kind of hard to see in certain lights as well. Yeah, uh, in the newer generation cars, Porsche have now just done a strip of colour, uh, which is much more sensible instead of the whole dial. Uh, yeah, $700, what a waste of money. So yes, the best way to make this base Boxster even more awesome is to remove seven or eight thousand dollars worth of the options that come with it, then you have a truly phenomenal car. And you know, with the seven or eight thousand dollars worth of savings, you can get one of those real girl mannequin sex dolls as your passenger. The great thing about having a mannequin sex doll is the expression on their face. They always look like this. <laughs> like, like they're showing stark astonishment at how awesome your driving skills are. So yes, let me know in the comments uh, what you think is holding back the sales of the awesome 718. I know a lot of people were going to say it's the four-cylinder engine, but you know that engine, 
uh, has its own advantages. You know, the six-cylinder engine, particularly the 2.5 and the 2.7 litres, uh, was never a powerful engine down low. You really had to push it. Whereas this engine uh, has got heaps of power, heaps of torque uh, right from the get-go, which really makes it a lot easier car to drive, and for a lot of people, a lot more enjoyable to drive. So I think the four-cylinder will come into its own. And finally, I want to do a quick update on where my car is at. As I said before, it's now so over four months it's been in being repaired, which is getting totally ridiculous. Uh, I actually had it back a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Porsche gave it back to me uh, for a day, but it uh, then broke down again straight away and had to be flatbedded back to the dealership. So it is a tricky situation because everybody writes to me, oh, Nick, you should get your money back. Oh, Nick, you should be making more of a fuss about this. And I'm really, you know, trying to stay calm because I don't want to make a big fuss about it. I'm hoping Porsche will fix it. And, you know, when Porsche buy a car back, it's not like you get all your money back. They, they, they pay you a, a market devaluation rate on the car. So, it, it, you know, it's a lose-lose situation for me no matter what happens. <clears throat> but, yes, I think it is ridiculous that the car's been... Uh, being repaired by Porsche North America for more than four months now and uh, my personal feelings on it are that <laughs> I think that if I ever get another Porsche 911 and believe me I will because I do believe in the brand I know, I know hundreds of people that have 911s they have no trouble I'm the only one that seems to have these problems and you know the car goes in for a simple issue a small issue and they fix that and it seems that something else goes wrong and so they fix that and it seems that something else goes wrong so I think if I ever get another 911 and something breaks, I'm just gonna let sleeping dogs lie, leave it broken because I don't want anything fixed in the future. Um, and that's certainly the case with my car at the moment. As they replace more and more parts on it, it, it just seems to be getting worse, uh, which is the real tragedy because th that is a fantastic car. It is exactly the way I wanted that car and you know, it's getting to the point where I really don't want the car back because it's been with them for so long and I'm really worried what they've done to it. So I'm putting the pressure on Porsche to, uh, to get their act together with my car and when I get some news on it I'll certainly update you guys but yeah, <laughs> this has been a remarkable journey so far. Anyway, thank you for watching everybody. Um, I'm gonna, Tui and I are going to go back to driving the, the Boxster uh, which we're enjoying even though it's winter but it's nice out. A uh, very pretty day. So I'll see you in the next video. Bye then.